Hello, thanks for joining me and welcome to a tour of eastern Apple Valley, Minnesota. Apple Valley is a southern suburb of the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul and in this tour we're going to be taking a look at the entire western side of Apple Valley. We're going to be going by the schools, the neighborhoods, the commercial areas and a lot of parks. So it's a great day for a top down tour. Thanks for joining me and stick around for the ride. We have just turned right and we are heading generally west on Safari Trail. We're going to be taking from uh, from Galaxy Avenue, which is a main road that runs north and south. We are taking a left and heading west onto Gantry Lane, which is in the Briar Oaks neighborhood on the very north side of Apple Valley. So as we enter this neighborhood, you'll get a look at the houses here, most of which were built in the 1980s and uh, the prices in this neighborhood range from about 400,000 to 600,000 on either side, but it's, uh, it's a nice neighborhood tucked away here between Galaxy Avenue and actually 35E is gonna be on the other side of the trees that you'll be seeing on the left-hand side of the screen. So it is early June in 2021 and it's about 77 degrees and it's just great weather for a drive. Um, my name is Kevin Huntington. I'm the managing broker of the independent real estate company Metro Home Connection Realty. And uh, I've been putting these tours up for people who are just curious about these areas of town. Um, maybe you're watching because you're thinking of relocating uh, to one of the suburbs of Minneapolis and St. Paul or one of the neighborhoods in Minneapolis and St. Paul, or uh, and you might be from the uh, inner parts of the cities moving out, or perhaps you are from out of state and just trying to get a feel for what the uh, suburbs and the neighborhoods are in the Twin Cities. So I kind of feel like it's hopefully helpful to have a tour where you're actually on the ground looking at neighborhoods and houses and schools and parks so you can really get a good feel for what these different neighborhoods and different suburbs are like. So thanks for joining me and um, we're gonna see a lot today. One thing about the homes we'll be seeing in the eastern side of Apple Valley, all the homes we're gonna be looking at today are driving by in neighborhoods are all gonna be located within School District 196. And uh, District 196 is one of the premier school districts in the Twin Cities Metro, um, highly regarded, and it is a target destination uh, for a lot of families with children um, to be located in the boundaries of 196. So right now I can tell you that everything we're gonna look at today will be located within the boundaries of School District 196. And as we come over the hill, we're gonna be hitting 121st Street. We're gonna be going left, and heading east, back to Galaxy Avenue. Galaxy Avenue is a main road through Apple Valley that runs north and south, and we will be getting on the Galaxy momentarily um, and be heading south to the next neighborhood. This is Safari Pass. Safari Pass takes us back to Galaxy. Here's, I guess, the first park we're gonna be passing. Give you a view of it on the right-hand side. It is Briar Oaks Park. There's a ball field and a playground and a sand volleyball court. This is somebody's house. And as we pull onto Galaxy here, you'll see that big wall of trees ahead of us. Um, interesting section of the Metro. And as we go through here, it kind of feels like we're in a forest. Um, 
but on the east side of Galaxy, in this portion, we back up to the Minnesota Zoo, which is obviously, if you look on a map, a very large piece of land. And just north of the Minnesota Zoo is uh, Lebanon Hills Regional Park. And this, the portion on this part, just north of here, is generally the mountain bike trails, which is another really highly regarded part of the metro. People come from all over the state all over everywhere to ride the Lebanon Hills mountain bike trail. And Lebanon Hills is actually a very large regional park that's shared between Apple Valley and Egan. And there are ponds and lakes, kayak rentals, um, a lot of interesting things um, to have here right in the South Metro. And here where we are in Apple Valley, we are only about maybe a 25 minute drive from downtown Minneapolis, a 15 minute drive to the airport, 10 or 12 minutes to the Mall of America. So we're a third ring suburb, but very conveniently located um, near the mall, the airport, not too far from downtown. And again, having this regional park right in the area is kind of a great bonus. So we are actually taking a left from Galaxy. We're gonna be heading east onto McAndrews Road. And McAndrews is a road that kind of spans all the way across um, the northern part of Apple Valley, runs from Rosemont all the way to Burnsville, and actually through Burnsville. So it's kind of a thoroughfare road, kind of a highway, mainly controlled access. And the first, or I guess the second neighborhood, uh, after Briar Oaks, we're gonna be checking out, is called Nordic Woods. And the access to Nordic Woods is right here off of McAndrews. So we're gonna be heading north uh, for a quick jump into Nordic Woods. And Nordic Woods is a neighborhood of kind of um, upper scale homes built mainly in the 80s. And the prices in this neighborhood run generally from 400,000, 450,000 to 700,000, depending on which house it is. So there's a variety of homes back here and actually a variety of lots. I had a friend, um, I went to, I, I grew up in Apple Valley myself, and I actually had a friend who lived back, a couple friends who lived in Nordic Woods, and one of them had an indoor swimming pool. So that was pretty fancy to me. Um, I didn't live in this neighborhood, but it's, uh, it's a nice neighborhood, still well-maintained. Um, when they built this neighborhood, they actually left some of the mature trees in, but now being 40 years since this neighborhood was built up, a lot of the other trees have filled in. So you can see we've got a pretty good canopy going here and a lot of shade and uh, kind of irregular lots, um, curvy roads and some hills. We just turned on to Floral Avenue. heading back west on 129th Avenue and we'll be taking a left on Foliage Avenue and uh, leaving Nordic Woods to the third neighborhood of the day. where that guy was waiting for like that road is a dead end that road is a loop and behind us is well he's facing one or two directions so all right we are coming back to McAndrews we're heading south on Foliage Avenue so this particular intersection is not controlled we're going to jump across McAndrews as we cross here we're going to be going by Nordic Park is a park that has, I'm not sure if you can see it, it used to be very clear. Um, it's a light blue, but one of the Apple Valley water towers is right there. You can get a good look at it, I think. 
one of the Apple Valley water towers is right there. There it is. And there's a playground and a pond and a walking path through Nordic Park. Crossing 132nd. And we are now entering the Greenleaf neighborhood of Apple Valley. And I believe this neighborhood, when it was built, was known as uh, the Greenleaf Second Edition. But Greenleaf is, it's just really a massive housing development that was built up kind of in the, I would say, early 70s. And I ought to know, this is the neighborhood I grew up in. Um, and we're gonna be getting a drive by the neighborhood school, Greenleaf Elementary. But kind of modest middle-class homes here. Prices generally 300 to 400,000. And uh, again, built up in the 70s. Homes in this neighborhood, maybe between 1,700 and 2,500 square feet initially. But as you'll see, this neighborhood, having been here 50 years and being desirable in school district 96, close to the elementary school, we, we will see a number of homes that the owners have put on kind of some unique additions, um, which is kind of, in my opinion, a sign of a desirable neighborhood that people are saying, hey, rather than leave this neighborhood and go to new construction or go to a, a larger development, I'm just gonna stay where I'm at because I like it and uh, just expand onto where I'm at. So we're looping back onto Galaxy so you can get a good view of Greenleaf Elementary, my alma mater. So we're gonna be heading north on Galaxy for a minute. Galaxy spelled with an IE for some reason, I'm not sure why. But there as you look west, that is Greenleaf Elementary. Kind of a standard style of the elementary schools that were building in Apple Valley in the 70s with kind of the dark brick. And we are now following my walking path from elementary school. This is the way I would walk home uh, from school when I lived here. And we're turning on to 133rd Street, my old street. And gosh, with <laughs> there might be some bumps you're experiencing on the camera, I apologize. I'm not sure if they have uh, maybe not properly re repaved the street since I lived here. Um, maybe one time, maybe they're coming up to that again. Um, it's, it's fine, but it's a little bumpy. Sorry about that. Okay, we are overlapping out of foliage again, but then we're gonna be taking a left. 134th Street and going by Greenleaf Park, one of the many parks in the neighborhood. We've already seen uh, Briar Oaks, Nordic, and now we're going to be coming by Greenleaf Park. And these chairs have been sitting here for about three days at least. So here's the park, tennis courts, kind of a little bit of a sledding hill, uh, playground behind the hill, trails in the woods, and then a walking path that goes all the way through to another part of the neighborhood. So it's kind of fun going back to the old neighborhood here. You can see with the age of this neighborhood that the trees that were probably planted when these homes were built have now filled in. So it's kind of cool. You get this great canopy uh, of trees and it's very, very nice. Okay, we're kind of at the peak part of the hill in Greenleaf and we're gonna be heading down for a while. Faith Park is on the right-hand side of the road behind these homes. So a lot of the parks in Apple Valley uh, are just kind of planted within neighborhoods. So here's a little trail into the park. So generally kind of surrounded by homes on most parts. So if you live in one of these homes on the, I guess that side as you're looking, you back up to Faith Park. And we'll get a look at Faith Park as we get to the bottom of the hill. Okay, so 
So here's the park. And this is a pretty large park. There's actually a lot of just natural area back there, trees and trails, um, a playground that you may or may not be able to see, ball fields. So one of the neat things about the Greenleaf neighborhood, this portion, and I think we're gonna be seeing another section of Greenleaf later in the tour, but one of the neat things is kind of the era these homes were built land was plentiful and as the metro area expanded beyond the second and or the first and second ring suburbs it just seemed like there's as much land as anyone would want so when they created these subdivisions greenleaf in particular there are some large lots back here um I guess relatively to what you'd find in the inner city of like 0.15 or 0.2 acres. The lots in Greenleaf, this section of Greenleaf at least, are um, kind of a third of an acre probably on average, maybe as small as a quarter, as big as a half, sometimes larger. And because of the hills and the curves of the street, they're all very irregular. So a lot of different options for, uh, for yards back here. And we are now, we've crossed out of Greenleaf and we are entered into the Windmere and Waterford neighborhoods. These neighborhoods were built in the early 2000s. And uh, the prices back here are generally three to 400,000, maybe a little more. Um, and the reason Greenleaf was established so long ago and this neighborhood wasn't, and we'll see this later, but there's been, there used to be a sand pit here, an aggregate pit, um, Apa Valley Ready Mix, where they would literally mine sand and gravel for roads and concrete construction. Um, and over the years, the site of what we used to call the sand pit has moved from this section of Apa Valley and moved kind of steadily south, southeast following whatever I mean, I guess when you're mining, you find a vein of gold or a vein of copper. I'm not sure what you call it when you find a vein of sand, but mainly sand, um, rocks, and aggregate that they've been digging up in Apple Valley since I was a little kid. And it's funny, you can, if you were to look on a map, you can find the newer neighborhoods that kind of tracked along the old path of the gravel pit as they got the sand out of the ground and sealed it back up, put a couple ponds in, and then build homes. Across the street, over to the west, is Eastview High School, and uh, that was sand pit for a while too, and now that's one of the newer high schools in Napa Valley, um, one of two high schools in Napa Valley, and a very desirable school to go to, built probably, I think, in the early 2000s. And we're going to be going right by it. So that's Eastview High School. On a big chunk of land back here, they do have a stadium, softball fields, soccer fields, tons of space, parking lot. But again, they were able to plop this high school kind of right in the middle of the city because this was gravel pit until um, not too long ago. So we just took a quick east direction jaunt on 140th Street and we're coming up to Johnny Cake Ridge Road where we're gonna be heading south. And at this point, as we head south, we're gonna get another view of the backside of Eastview High School. And we've also got a bunch of parks over here pan to the east and we're going to see Johnny Cake Ridge Park. Another stadium over here. But this is a big expansive park area and it's mainly set aside for ball fields so there are walking paths and a, and a playground as well. But this is a 
big section of land and in the summertime during the 4th of July they kind of have nowadays they've got the carnival over here with kind of food trucks and and some rides so it's kind of plenty of space for community events and celebrations and here's the Apple Valley water park unfortunately not open because at the time we're filming we we're just getting beyond COVID-19 and the summer hasn't started school is about to be out on a week and we're going to continue to head south on Johnny Cake Ridge and as we do so upcoming into tour we'll, we'll next be seeing uh, downtown Apple Valley and I do have another tour out um, of Western Apple Valley that has a portion of downtown but we're going to be looking at the other side of the commercial and retail development in downtown Apple Valley then heading south and looking at some neighborhoods right along the uh, Lakeville border and the Rosemont border. And when we come, so the next big road, we're gonna be taking a turn and heading west onto Country Road 42, which has always been one of the main roads through Apple Valley, goes right through the center of town. You will get a glimpse of the location of the gravel pit, the sand pit now, because it has followed the uh, glacial moraine south, and it is now sitting on the south side of County Road 42. And as we pull up to 42, you'll get a look at one of the entrances into the Apple Valley Gravel Pit. And eventually, they're gonna get the sand and aggregate out of this area too. And we're gonna be driving along the south side of that portion of land in a little bit. And you'll see they're already um, kind of setting areas aside where there are new roads and even if you were to look on a google map of the area you'll find you can look at the google map and areas that look like complete sand pit and and construction trucks are now actually getting um, platted out for subdivisions so um, constant state of motion following this uh, vein of sand south and we're going to be taking our right heading west on County Route 42. So growing up in Apple Valley, when I was a kid, <laughs> County Route 42, I, I think it was one lane in either direction, at least at this point, off to the uh, south side of the road was a uh, really neat mini golf course and a driving range. And coming up here, there were two farms, farmhouses that sat right on County Road 42. And as you're about to see, definitely not the case anymore. Farmhouses have been replaced with retail. So now where there used to be farms and uh, behind the farms was uh, the old gravel pit location. Um, now we've got a Kohl's and a Walmart or I mean a Sam's Club Walmart is on the other side of Apple Valley, a Staples um, shoe store, a whole bunch of uh, retail that used to be farmland, which I guess every place around here used to be farmland. But it's just funny thinking back to that age when this was a two lane road with farms on either side and uh, no development at all. And as soon as we get across this light, we're gonna be seeing plenty of development as we get into downtown Apple Valley. So you get a little vista view here as we hit the top of a slope that heads into, uh, into town. And I'm not sure if it shows up, but Buck Hill, Skiing Hill and Burnsville is in the background. We're looking at the former site of the Menard store, which has since moved further east. But this is kind of some of the newest retail in Apple Valley. And this area was probably put in 
I should say, in the early 2000s. So there's Coles, and I guess we see a Bed Bath & Beyond. Fresh Time Market. And straight ahead of us, we're gonna be curving past it, is um, a Dakota County Court Facility. And next to that is the new Apple Valley Municipal Center. And next to, on the other side, is the Apple Valley Dakota County Library branch so that's on the other th other other side of galaxy which we're going to be getting to momentarily as we kind of round up through this area and let's take a peek we're actually going to have to take a right to go north on galaxy but as we pull up here you'll get a look at the municipal center and uh, the courthouse off to the left pretty large development at the time when they put that courthouse in. So we are back to Galaxy Avenue, this time headed north, and we're gonna be taking a left and continuing west on 147th Street. And uh, if you saw the other video I have of Western Napa Valley, we started, we kind of got to downtown and we had continued west on 147th, we're on the eastern side of that, so we won't be overlapping where uh, the last tour was, but this would be what you would see if you would have taken a left and gone east on 147th from Cedar Avenue, Highway 77. And as we pull around the corner, two things are going to come into view. One of them is now a school. And the school used to be, and unfortunately is no longer, but built in the late 80s was a $2 movie theater. And I'm not sure if you've ever had those where you live, but they kind of put second runs of movies in here. So after they left the main theaters and you could come here, in that building there, Fit Academy Charter School, and uh, see movies for two bucks, and it was kind of fun. And popcorn is cheap, and uh, it's no longer, unfortunately. And then we've got Bogart Place, which is um, used to be called Apple Place Bowl, but this location has been here since before I was born, I think. Um, I remember coming here and finding an, finding an eight track Beach Boys tape in the parking lot. So this place has been here for a long time and it's kind of neat. Still here, they've got live music, which you don't see a lot in Apple Valley. They'll literally have, you know, bands come in. On the left, we've got Wild Bill's Saloon and then actually first we got Cowboy Jacks, I guess this way with the way you're looking and then Wild Bill's. So nobody else but me would call it, call it this, but you might call like this the entertainment district of Apple Valley because just on the far side of the police station, you've got two kind of main bars, Wild Bills and uh, Cowboy Jacks, and uh, then Bogart's Place, Apple Valley Bowl. And then here's the Wings Financial Building. So kind of interesting to have such a tall building in Apple Valley growing up where we had nothing of the kind. So we're coming back to 147th Street, and if we get lucky, we'll be able to take a left. And it looks like we are going to get lucky. I head out here. And we are back on 147th and we're going to be taking a left and heading south on Cedar, also known as Highway 77. And when we get onto Cedar Avenue, we're going to be back to 42 and that really is the center of downtown Apple Valley. So here's Cowboy Jacks, people out enjoying a beer on the patio on a 
beautiful Tuesday afternoon. So as we sit at the light of the middle of Apple Valley here, heading south on Cedar Avenue 42 uh, and Kenner Road 42, we're gonna be taking a left, and as we do, we're gonna be going past Southport Center, which is uh, commercial development, retail development that was put together in the 80s and the 90s. Within this development was, as I understand it, the very first Target Greatland, if you've ever heard of a Target Greatland, one of the stores before Super Target came out. Now I imagine it's a Super Target. Uh, so many Targets here in the South Metro that I don't happen to get to this one uh, really anymore. But it's, they're, they're in the middle of renovating it, probably making it larger. But the interesting thing about this corner, this southeast corner of Conrad 42 and Cedar Avenue, is where the Target is located used to be Southport Airfield. So in addition to the farmhouses and the farms and the barns being right on 42 in this very vicinity, I guess I probably never saw an airplane land, but the landing strips were there exactly where the Target is today, running diagonally, and then there were old barns and airplane hangars along County Road 42 that were just there for the longest time after the airfield was no longer an airport. But uh, in the 50s and 60s, before Apple Valley became Apple Valley and was known as Lebanon Township, Southport Airfield was where all this stuff was. And that is what made it possible to put the target on all the retail development down here because it was an airfield and then a farm behind that for the longest time. And then as the Twin Cities Metro expanded south and Apple Valley grew much bigger, this was a big section of land ready to be developed. So here we are at the Target. We're gonna cruise past the Target. There's a Best Buy and an Office Depot. And we are kind of now in the heart of the retail area of Apple Valley, at least on the western side of Apple Valley. And we'll just kind of cruise through this parking lot. Hopefully we won't get slowed down by too many people crossing in front of us. So one interesting thing I'll add about all this development in Apple Valley. Um, when I was a kid, things were a little different in the 70s, and Apple Valley was a town that was very reluctant to give away liquor licenses. And still, I believe all the liquor stores in Apple Valley are municipal liquor stores. They kind of keep a lockdown on the booze. So the city owns the liquor stores and they were very reluctant to give out liquor licenses. So sitting here in Apple Valley in the 60s and 70s, oops, could have made that, but I have to finish the story here. Um, in the, in the 70s here in Apple Valley, there were a few places that you could get a beer at. Now, I was a little tiny kid, so I didn't need to get a beer, but they were basically kind of like old restaurants and bars that had been here for a super long time, and there were only a few of them. And interestingly, we didn't have any restaurants like Applebee's or Chili's or uh, not that that's like the epitome of the <laughs> fine dining, but we didn't have any restaurants here because no restaurant wanted to uh, come into a town where you can serve alcohol. So right around the buildup here, shortly after the Target, I'm not sure what got into the city council's head, but they finally modernized and starting started giving out liquor licenses. And as a result, now we've got we don't have a Chili's, but we have an Applebee's and a whole bunch of other restaurants um, and brew pubs um, where you can get beer and alcohol. So finally, as you look around, you can see Apple Valley is finally modernized. But that was always funny to me. I was wondered why when we were a kid, if we went out to eat, we would go to Burnsville was kind of fairly modern. Burnsville, Bloomington, all the cities around us seemed like normal places where you could go and my dad could get a beer. But Apple Valley, for some reason, was, um, we, we hardly had any restaurants downtown. OK, 
Okay, we are headed back east and uh, we are pretty near the southern point of Apple Valley. And as we are still in the area, there were farms and Southport Airfield. When they developed that target, all this land became available for development. And what they did is they just went ahead and Apple Valley really had a couple of apartments on the north side and some townhomes that had been built in the 70s. And when, the, when they developed this area, as you can see all around me, they just went crazy with high density. So in this section of Apple Valley, which is the uh, southeast section, it's mainly apartments. There are hotels back here, um, some retail, kind of some buildings with apartments above and retail below, um, commercial businesses, and tons and tons of townhomes and condominiums. So Apple Valley really didn't have any of this up until the early 2000s when this section of Apple Valley was built up. So we won't be spending too much time in this neighborhood, but we're gonna dart through it and then get back to more single family homes on the very far southeast corner of Apple Valley. So I'd give you some neighborhood names here, but there are a million of them because they just would have a condo building and then a small developer of townhomes and some more townhomes. And uh, everything just got built up here over time, kind of piecemeal. And in a sense, when you're driving around here and I didn't want to put you or myself through it, but some of these roads just kind of get crazy. There's a one way that'll dart off this way and kind of weird one way is to me, I feel like they probably could have been more careful when they laid out the, uh, when they laid out the streets down here, but I think it was just, they would plat a subdivision, fill it in, plat another subdivision. And I could be totally wrong. Maybe they thought about it extensively, but it seems to me that it could have been planned out a little better because now you've got just kind of some roads, some parks, a lot of building. But um, if you're looking for a townhome, there are a lot of them down here and they are generally between $200,000 and $300,000. And we're actually conveniently located, of course, to downtown Apple Valley, but there is a pretty large transit center behind uh, the movie theater on Cedar Avenue, Highway 77. So, um, you know, for anybody who works in downtown Minneapolis uh, or St. Paul, there are there's good bus service to get wherever you want to go from that transit center. And we are still in the midst of more townhomes as we crossed Foliage Avenue and we are headed to Pilot Knob. Interestingly, as the neighborhoods spread out further west, you'll see it gets a little less dense. And I'm not sure why that is. Um, not sure if it was a uh, conscious zoning decision, but we've got twin homes and townhomes over here and then some single families starting to show up and the yards just get bigger and you get a little more elbow room. But right in that, that area behind Target, it feels really, it can feel really closed in. As mentioned, we would be hitting the south side of the gravel pit and here it is. And they're actually starting to build some homes over here now, but you get a look at this street. This is actually where Johnny Cake Ridge Road, um, which we're gonna be on later, would go through. And you can see the sand at the end of where that road's gonna be. And beyond that, you can see they've got some townhomes being built up. So we are still in Apple Valley and we are again in the southeast corner. And we are headed into wide open spaces where either a farm was, no, I guess there, there's, there's some sand. There's the actual remains of the gravel pit where they're grading back into land for additional housing developments. And what's that up there that you might see? That's another target, which is funny because we literally just left a target three miles ago. And uh, target founded in the Twin Cities, first target in Roseville, Minnesota. Um, if you're not from this area, We've got targets everywhere, but I guess that's kind of probably the same thing all over the country. Um, but here's the next target that we run into. And 
I'm not sure if we're going to get a green, so let's take a left. And we're going to pull in by the target. So we're heading north on Pilot Knob Road. There's that other target. And we've got a variety of neighborhoods over here on the south side of 42. We're taking a right on 155th Street. We're going to come around to Target and we're going to go into a very unique development called Cobblestone Lake or Lakes. Following along on the map, we are heading south on Embry Path. Cruising around the backside of Target. And here we've got apartments, restaurants, more commercial development. And looking straight ahead, that's one of the many parks along what's called Cobblestone Lake of Apple Valley. And that's Cobblestone Lake Park. And we are gonna be heading into the Cobblestone Lakes development. And this is kind of a newer concept for Apple Valley. As you get a look at some of the homes that are single family homes, condominiums and townhomes back here. And when they built this development, it was, I would say, radically different from anything else that we had in Napa Valley. If you see, as you'll see any of the single family homes, tiny lots, very, very tiny lots. And I'm not sure if we should be looking at the townhomes ahead or Cobblestone Lake to the south. But there's Cobblestone Lake. And here's another part, another park. There are walking paths all alongside this lake. And there's a playground. And now we're gonna get into some single family homes in the Cobblestone Lakes development. But compared to what we have seen and we will see more of here in Apple Valley, I mean we've got single family on the south side, we've got townhomes on the north side, we've got boulevards. And you can just see how tightly packed these homes are to each other. So uh, not a lot of yard, but the concept in this area as we pull up to another portion of the lake and parks, the concept in Cobblestone Lake development was that the yards would be small, but there would be a lot of common space and little parks here and there. So if you want to take your kids for a walk or to the playground or to play outside, you would kind of go to the common space rather than rely on your own yard or your own large backyard. Um, to play, you'd be in the common spaces. And here's another walking trail that goes down around the lake. So it was a concept down here, and it's pretty popular. Townhomes in this neighborhood are kind of in the 250 dollars to $350,000 range, and the homes are kind of in the four fifty dollars to $700,000 range. Again, built in the early 2000s, a more modern style of home than we've seen in other parts of Apple Valley. But again, remember the yards are really small, kind of close together, but there are plenty of walking paths and parks uh, to go um, and get outdoor space at outside of your own yard. So that's Cobblestone Lake. We are pretty much sitting at the far southeast corner of Apple Valley. To the east, yards over there, we're verging on Rosemount, and to the south behind me is uh, Lakeville. 
Empire Township and Farmington. So we are literally in the bottom right corner. We're gonna be heading north back uh, towards the northern part of Appa Valley as we hit some additional neighborhoods really here on the far east side of Appa Valley off of Diamond Path and Pilot Knob Road and heading back to Johnny Cake Ridge Road. And do stay tuned because in addition to the neighborhoods that we have upcoming, we are going to be ending our tour at what I think is a really unique feature of Appa Valley and the South Metro in general, but uh, kind of got a unique surprise at the end of the video. So do stay tuned for that surprise. And if you can't wait, um, you can click the chapter at the bottom and jump ahead. But I think it really is uh, one of the cool things about Appa Valley and the South Metro to have this particular feature that we'll be seeing um, in probably 10 or 15 minutes. In the meantime, we are headed north on Diamond Path and we are about to cross County Road 42. And we're gonna be coming up to Diamond Path Elementary, um, going through a neighborhood, and then we're gonna get a look at one of the middle schools. Um, actually, we'll see both of the rest of the Apple Valley Middle Schools in this video, Scott Highlands and Falcon Ridge. But we've got Diamond Path Elementary coming up next. Alright, that is 145th Street, heads into Rosemount, right into downtown Rosemount. We're going to be taking a left and heading west on 144th Street. And as we turn here, south side of the road, you'll be getting a look at Diamond Path Elementary. You'll notice the construction of Diamond Path is kind of familiar, it looks just like Greenleaf. I think four of the elementary schools built here in the 70s all kind of have that same dark brick style as Greenleaf, Diamond Path, Echo Park, and Cedar Park Elementary. And now we're kind of heading into what I would call a random neighborhood, different builders. Um, doesn't have a grand monument coming in, and the subdivisions back here are called Pilot Knob Estates. And this section, of uh, homes generally sits here between Diamond Path on the east and Pilot Knob on the west. We get a little homes here, generally in the three to four hundred thousand dollar range, and they were mainly built in the 1980s. And 144th Street is kind of a main road through the neighborhood. So this road is a little wider than the neighboring streets. And you'll see more sidewalks. For the most part, most of the neighborhoods in Apple Valley do have neighborhood sidewalks, in addition to kind of the asphalt bike paths that run kind of throughout the city, um, which I guess is kind of nice. Kids aren't playing in the street. They're on the sidewalk. We're coming up to Embry Path and we're gonna take a jaunt to the right and we're gonna eventually funnel out on Pilot Knob.
Lawrence Avenue, and it's gonna take us right up to Pilot Knob. And as we get up to Pilot Knob, you'll be looking across the street and seeing Scott Highlands Elementary School, which was the second, uh, not elementary, it's a middle school. It's actually another one of my alma maters. Scott Highlands Middle School, it's where I went to middle school, uh, grades six through, six through eighth. And on the back side of Scott Highlands is Highland Elementary. We're getting a, getting a look at that too. All right, that's Scott Highlands. And right on the other side of the building, as we pass by Scott Highlands, we will see Highland Elementary School. And that's Highland Elementary, back behind us. Well, as we sit here, let's get a look over to the east where we've got kind of a strip mall that you can't see. We've got a Walgreens on the corner and behind that there is a strip mall which kind of has a little gas station mart, um, dentist's office, I'm not sure what else, probably a chiropractic office and maybe an insurance office, but that sits on the south east corner of 140th and Pilot Knob where we sit right now. We're going to turn back towards that intersection hoping we get a green light soon. In the meantime I'll give you a preview of what's to come. We're going to be heading back west on 140th Street and heading into our final neighborhood which is not really close to the original Greenleaf neighborhood but I think I mentioned the uh, earlier Greenleaf neighborhood, one of the earlier neighborhoods on the tour, I think the third neighborhood we looked at, um, that was the second edition. In this area, we're getting into the sixth, um, seventh and eighth, maybe more edition of Greenleaf. And uh, if I hadn't mentioned before on this tour, Greenleaf is just an expansive neighborhood. Um, and we're gonna be turning onto Everest Avenue which I think is an appropriate name because on either side of Everest is a huge hill. And we're gonna be going down the first one as soon as we get to the top of this ridge. There, and you see that sign? Steep grade ahead. I once had the brilliant idea, I thought it would be a cool thing to come down this hill on my skateboard. And on the way, on the way to do that, I was with a friend of mine, and uh, he was, thought he'd do it too. And uh, we went down another big hill in Apple Valley, and my buddy wiped out on that hill, and uh, had to go walking, limping home. So we never made it to this hill, and I'm pretty happy we didn't, because at the age I was at, I just probably wasn't thinking, and this, <laughs> this is a very steep hill. And we're just getting to the bottom of it. So Greenleaf, sixth, seventh, and eighth edition, Built also in the 70s, and homes here, generally in the three to $400,000 range. And if you look on a map, these Greenleaf developments are not only off of Galaxy um, and off of Pilot Knob and 140th, but they also extend south um, into other areas of Apple Valley. But just very large neighborhood, uh, nice homes, and again, built in the 70s, we're in that era where curvy streets and a lot of hills, um, irregular lots, and um, and sometimes very big yards. A lot of these homes will back up to parks or ponds, and uh, just like we've seen up to this point, being a neighborhood that's 50 years old, all these boulevard trees 
are now mature and we've got that great canopy giving us this nice shade as we drive through the neighborhood. And uh, we're soon to be exiting this neighborhood and heading towards that wonderful surprise that I have in store for the end of our uh, tour of Eastern Napa Valley today. So there's a little pond at the bottom of this hill and then a couple lakes beyond that, Long Lake and then Farquhar Lake. And Farquhar is a part of the regional park. But uh, that's why there's no houses on that side of the street. We're taking a left. We're gonna be heading west on 131st Street up another hill. Oh, if you look right behind me, just another detail of this neighborhood, me and hills for some reason, riding my 12 speed down this hill when I was about 13 years old, hit that corner, thought I would just cruise around at full speed and head up Everest on the other side. And uh, too much of an angle and I, I wiped out. I still have the scar on my knee 35 years later to, uh, to demonstrate that dumb move. Again, I probably should stay away from wheeled vehicles and hills. Okay, exiting 131st Street onto Johnny Cake Ridge Road. As we pull onto this road, we're gonna be driving by Falcon Ridge Middle School. And let's just get out right now. So Hagemeister Park is off to that direction as you look at the screen and beyond that is Falcon Ridge Middle School. That is the third middle school in Napa Valley, Valley Middle, then Scott Highlands, and the newest one, unless there's one I'm not aware of, is Falcon Ridge. You'll see the sign to the zoo. We are now at Johnny Cake Ridge Road and McAndrews, and McAndrews we we almost started on, that was near the beginning of our tour, the road that runs east to west across the northern part of Apple Valley. And just down, I guess, that direction as you look, um, is the entrance to the Minnesota Zoo. So we are now on the other side of the zoo, which runs between Galaxy and Johnny Cake Ridge Road. We're heading north, and now we're at the very near north end of Apple Valley, but again, before we exit the city, I've got a great and very unique uh, surprise in store for you. That if you aren't from this area, you might think is pretty cool. And if you are from this area, you may not know this is here. And I think it'll be a nice surprise if, if it is a surprise. It's one of my favorite places to go in the South Metro. I live in Egan, only about three or four miles from this place. And uh, we're coming up right now to Lebanon Hills Regional Park campground. And I do have other videos that have more information and tours of Lebanon Hills Regional Park. But what we're doing right here, still in Apple Valley, because Lebanon Hills spans Apple Valley and Egan, but this little section of the park has the campground. And I just think this campground is so unique because when you get back in the woods, um, there are actually three sections, kind of a super rustic where you can drive your car back or walk in and put up a tent. Um, there is a very large RV area, which I think you'll get a glimpse of as we continue into the park. Um, and again, watch my videos on Lebanon Hills Regional Park for more information. There are. RVs off in this direction pull through sites with full water, electric, and sewer. But we're going to the East Loop, and this is where I like to camp because when you get back here, you're in the middle of a southern suburb of a major metro metropolitan area. Again, 25 to 30 minutes to downtown Minneapolis or St. Paul from this very location, 15 to 20 minutes to the Mall of America and the airport. And yet, when we get above this hill onto the dirt road, you feel like you're in a state park. And most of these sites back here are electric. So if you've got 
uh, like an old RV or a pop-up camper or a short, um, smaller tow behind, you get back into these sites and you feel like you're camping in a state park, which I just think is awesome. So we're gonna be driving in, getting a look at this park. And as we do, I'm gonna be putting up some other videos on the screen in case you would like to learn more about suburbs or neighborhoods of the Twin Cities. I'm gonna put up a couple of videos right now that I recommend that you watch. If you like this tour, please continue and watch more. And also, if you like this tour, please subscribe and click the like button, that'll help me out a lot. And if you are thinking of relocating to the Twin Cities or relocating from the Twin Cities um, to any other different neighborhood, don't hesitate to give me a call if you've got any questions. I will have my contact information below. Other than that, thanks so much for joining me and, uh, and have a great day. Take care.